right, we're back with Barely Famous, and I'm your Barely Famous host, Kale Lowry. Today I have two guests, Lola Blanc and Megan Grainer. Griner. Well, call me Megan Elizabeth because I don't go by my last name. I forgot. Megan Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you for correcting me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys are the hosts of the podcast called Trust Me, Cults, Extreme Belief, and the Abuse of Power. Do you guys want to talk to me about this? Uh, we sure do. Okay. I was listening to a podcast episode of yours before we got here because I was like, I need to know more. And it was a narcissism episode. Mm. Yeah. That's one yeah. of my favorites. Talk to me about the cults that you guys came from. Which one came from the offshoot of Jehovah Witness? A Mormonism. Mormonism. That would be me. Okay. Yeah. And then... Mine is a Christian group called... Okay. Yeah. Then called- so maybe someone else was on... Was, was an offshoot of Jehovah Witness? It might have been Lola's because she's kind of an offshoot. It was a Mormon offshoot uh, cultic situation. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mormons okay. and Jehovah's Witnesses, very similar. <laughs> really? Okay. I, when I was growing up, one of my best friends was Jehovah Witness, and I mm. went to Kingdom Hall with her. Mm. Um, while I was a teen mom, like I was pregnant, it was oh, not, shoot. yeah, it was not. They did not like that there. It wasn't, no, it was not fun. So I'll tell you about that after you tell me about your experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was raised a regular Mormon or LDS, as we're supposed to say, um, w- to start as a child. And that was like, you know, just sort of regular weird religion, like three hour church and not allowed to drink coffee or tea or wear anything sleeveless or anything. But it wasn't I don't consider – my experience, I do not consider that part a cult. Okay. What happened was when I was 12 years old, my mom um, was divorced from my dad, <clears throat> went to a Mormon singles dance, and essentially was targeted by a man who just like t- purely coincidentally looked exactly like a man she had dreamed about prior to meeting him when she had prayed to God to be like – who, you know, who's the man that I'm supposed to marry? So she meets this guy who just happens to look like the man from her dream. Mm-hmm. He's, like, charming her. He's, like, dancing with the old ladies. Um, and to really, really condense a much longer story, episode one of our podcast, shout out, my mom is our first guest. Trust me. Tr- on trust me, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, basically, over time, he convinced her that he and and uh, let me preface this by saying within mormonism there's this belief that you have um, the you have the bible and then you have the book of mormon which is an additional scripture basically the founding prophet joseph smith he joseph what was that <laughs> <laughs> joseph smith um he, he basically uh, basically as legend has it there's like a portion of these scriptures that he translated from an angel that were hidden away to be revealed in the last days okay i, I vaguely know that from just like documentaries and things like that yeah. i like vaguely remember that story okay yeah, cool. or like the what, do you, what would you call it? I don't know what to call I'm always like legend. Legend, lore, yeah. Myth, yeah, yeah. Like, call it a myth. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> As legend it has it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, so this leaves room for all kinds of people because the first prophet was someone who just showed up and was like, I'm talking to God. Mm-hmm. It, this leaves room for all of these different people because a number of people have done this to come out and be like, hey, now I'm the one talking to God. I am translating the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. So basically, this man preyed on my mom's beliefs, as he had done with people previously, and convinced her over time, with the help of additional people who were in on it, that he was the prophet of God. And I stumbled upon their letters to each other, and then I believed in him, too. Um, And he essentially separated me from my mom, and uh, she was sex trafficked and um, suicidal, and it was actually a pretty horrific experience for her, and I didn't know what was going on. I was just like... I believe in the prophet. So when you say you were separated from her, in mm-hmm. what way? So I was basically uh, – he basically told her that her k- – k- well, what he told her was that she had to put her kids up for adoption, which she re- absolutely would never do. Um, so my brothers, a couple of them went to live with my dad, and I wanted to still be close to her. So I asked a family from church if I could just, like, stay with them. But um, I Did they understand? And they were like, yes, if this is from this guy who is claiming to be talking to God, it's fine? No, because this was our secret. This was, like, we were still going to regular Mormon church, and secretly... Well, I think my we had kind of stopped, but I had been going, and secretly we're like, but we believe in this. We believe in the real prophet over here, even okay. though Mormons have their prophet. So, what did the family that you were staying with think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I'm like, what did they think was happening? Yeah. Um, I think, I think one of them reached out to me like years ago because I had written an article about it for Vice, and he read it, and I think he was like, wow, I had no idea that was happening. I think they were just like, something's weird. We'll take care of her for now. 
Uh, but basically, my mom had this horrific, traumatizing experience, and that's a you know whole other story. But a man came, knew it was all fraud, told her, and essentially got her out of there, and then we were able to get out. How? That's so hard. I have a friend that was in a cult for a short time, and when you're in a state of like almost like brainwashing yeah you can't convince them to get out and like yeah. everything that i was saying to her she we would she would she was not receptive you right. know what i'm saying and i'm like i'm trying to help you not fight with you you know what i mean and yeah. trying to tell these other people that she was like recruiting i'm like this is not what you think right. it is this is a cult like yeah. what she and i don't even think she realized it was a cult totally and we haven't talked about it since mm. like since she got out which i don't really know how she got out we have never talked about it and so like how do you were you able to get other people out of it or no so there so at the time it was so small it was like just us and like random people who we didn't really know but now he has a bigger group and actually a family member of one of the members has reached out to be like what do i do i can't get my family member out, like out of his grasp he's taken people's money he used to have them write write their uh names into his uh, will. His name into their will. Yeah, he's, like, doing the whole fucking thing, and he will be exposed, and it's going to be a whole thing. But, um, so, yeah, so far, people have, like, eventually figured it out, but it, he's re- he's a really, really good manipulator. He f- figures out exactly – because his, his, like, thing that he preaches changes. It evolves over time according to whatever he thinks will be the right thing that – People will, will listen exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. He's so fucking good at this. And that's the thing we talk about a lot on the show is, like, anyone is susceptible to this kind of thing, just, like, depending on where you are in your life and depending on how good of a manipulator that person is because right. they hide. You cannot tell. People think – we think we can tell. Yeah. And maybe be, if we've experienced it before, maybe we can see red flags. Sure. But a lot of the time – they're just really fucking good at hiding. Right. You well, know? it's like relationships with narcissists. Exactly. You just, you think that you're so strong and you will never be the target for one of these mm-hmm. or, and then until you find yourself in the middle of a cult. Or also I, my problem is always like, oh, they're really fun and charming. I can handle it. Like I'll just stay on top of it and not get dragged down. Maybe like right. have a little make out session and have some fun. <laughs> and then in a week I'm like, I'm dying. Knees <laughs> deep. Yeah, 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 for it's, sure. It's bad. So yeah. tell me about your experience. Sure. Um, So I just really quickly, Lola, want to add that your mom was, like, the perfect mom, which makes it even crazier. Oh, the perfect mom. PTA mom. mom. Like, for her to suddenly be like, my kids are going to go live. It's it's really. She wrote children's books. Like, she was my best. She's still my best friend. She's the fucking best. She's an angel. (laughs) She's a literal angel. But, like, super mom. And the only reason she would ever even listen to this person is because he basically held the idea of her our eternal salvation over her head. Right. Like, if she didn't listen to him, then we wouldn't be together in heaven. And that's, like, the ultimate nightmare. So thank you for shouting that out. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I was raised in one called the two-by-twos. If you – they claim that it doesn't have a name, but if you look it up on the internet, it's going to come up under two-by-twos. And kind of like Lola was saying, there's a part of this religion that I don't think is culty. I think it can be – if you're choosing it from your free will, a super beautiful thing. They okay. meet in homes. There's no churches. There's no money. There's no ministers uh, in the typical way you think of it. There's people who offer themselves. It's called the work. And they go out two by twos because Jesus said, go out two by two. And they don't have any possessions. And they stay with the people in the religion. It's a pretty big religion. Okay. But it's very secretive. Okay. Um. So I grew up in that, had to wear long skirts, my hair in a bun, no makeup, no jewelry, no television, didn't know what a John Stamos was, like lost. Oh, wow. (laughs) What a weird example. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of still don't know what a John Stamos is. I just remember somebody being like, have you seen Home Alone? And I was like, no, it's too scary. Like, because I just was imagining that that's what it would be, a horror movie. And they were like, okay, so you're really petrified of people slipping on marbles and getting feathers stuck in their hair or something. (laughs) Okay, but the furnace scene in that movie is actually really scary. It is scary. (laughs) That's true. So, you know, just like completely separated from society and and my brain, but then sent to normal school. It kind of sounds like the Amish. It is it so you're living like the Amish, but the point is they say the Amish are wrong because Jesus says be in the world, not of the world. So it's wrong to just go off by yourselves, according to them, mm. and be good. That who, how is that hard? You have to be in the middle of the world and show them what being good is. So okay. extra humiliating for me. Wish I would have been Amish so I didn't have to take the <laughs> outfits out on the town. But uh, <laughs> there we were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. <clears throat> What would you say the worst part of it was? Oh, God. Uh, I, hell, OCD. I definitely 
have OCD. That is we hell both, we based. Both yeah. <laughs> do you have? Is yours hell though? Mine's not religious. No. no. Yours is like I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And mine is I'm gonna go to hell. Cause, yeah. <laughs> Can I right. ask what y'all's beliefs are now? Yeah. I mean, you go first. I am uh, agnostic, heavily leaning atheistic, and like very pro science. That's we have that in common. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and what are yours? So I, I'm a little bit more magical thinking ish. Okay. Definitely spiritual. Definitely feel connected to something and believe in a higher power. I love that you guys have this dynamic and such different beliefs because I just growing up I've always questioned just like a higher power and things like that and I've had people really just be so turned off by the fact that I would question it or that I really Mm. don't have like a belief in a higher power and they almost feel like I am like devilish like they can't like be around me or they can't be friends with me because of that because it's so foreign where we're where I'm from right um I don't really know a whole lot of other people that don't have a belief in a higher power really yeah no and I remember specifically when I got married um he was Catholic he grew up Catholic he went to Catholic school he went to church he was you know baptized I guess Mm -hmm. Um, communion all of that and they were like oh your differences in in religion and what your beliefs are are going to be you know the reason why you guys get divorced and let me tell you that was never an issue so I love this dynamic of like people can have different beliefs and different views and come together and have a great dynamic you know we make fun of each other (laughs) (laughs) I love that yeah it's fun It's, it's interesting so have you guys connected with other people who have gotten out of cults that's, oh yeah yeah that's okay. mostly what our podcast yes is. Yeah. and yeah. what is like the craziest story that you guys have heard Ooh. Ooh. okay there's there have been a lot because we've had people from heaven's gate manson family amanda Man- okay time out the manson family we kristen and i yesterday um out of all the times i've been to la i've never gone to see like any of the houses uh-huh. so what? we drove Oh, my God. Am I putting... I don't know. People are going to think we're weird. We (laughs) looked up some of the houses and went to them. Dude, I've done that. Okay. I've, I've like, so... I'm so fascinated by that story. Fascinating. Because that's actually who I thought of when it was, like, when they brought brought you guys to me. I was like, okay, the Manson family. Because that's, like, a cult thing, right? Like, Mm -hmm. how the fuck was he able to get these people to believe what he was saying? Well, he had them on a lot of drugs. drugs. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of drugs. But then also just... If you're super sure of yourself, as a narcissist always is, normal people are like, I kind of don't know what the fuck is going on. You have an answer? Great. Uh, let me know what it is. And I think people can get away with a lot. That confidence is, is intoxicating. And and one of the things that Diane Lake, who was the member, um, talked about on our show is that like at the time – Everyone was in communes. Everybody, this was just like a part of the culture at the time. It actually wasn't unusual to be living on a ranch with a bunch of people talking about free love or whatever. Right. He just like had them on drugs and was more fucked up and shit got darker and darker. Um, but initially joining, he was just like another one of the many people doing that, you know? How crazy. Like, I just, I'm. Um... We looked up all the people who were, like, involved and charged and things like that. And we're just like, how? Like, how does this happen? I know. Well, and when you talk to Diane, she's so normal. And that's the that's the biggest thing that's been, like, so, I I guess, awesome to see is, like, there, there are so many smart, incredible people who have these experiences and come out of it. And they're like, I don't know what the fuck happened. I'm, like, a normal person. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> smart and incredible. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people even with, like, psychology degrees. And so, you know, people who you're, you're like, you would never think well, that would happen to them. My dad's a surgeon. And he's in this. Oh, he's still in it. Oh, completely. Do you have a relationship with him? Yes. And he's okay with you kind of stepping away? No. That's no. why I don't use my last name. I mean, he knows I'm not in it. But for him to know that I think it's culty – um, well, yeah, a side of this religion is culty. You know, if people are staying in people's homes and they're men and they're not allowed to have sex, that can be a problem because children are there. Right. And so there has been many times when somebody's been molested and they just move them like the Catholic Church. And those kind of things are super, super culty. Yeah. Um, but sorry, I don't. I just wanted to throw that in, and I forgot what you asked me. You said that your dad was a surgeon. Right. And do you guys have a relationship? We do. Yeah. You do but he doesn't know that I'm that I'm doing this podcast. I'm trying to to talk I mean he kind of does I'm trying to talk to him more about it but oh, he kind of does yeah what yeah. are okay and then your your mom do you have a good relationship with her love her so much she's totally in it they're all they're they're completely in it yeah I, so interesting yeah see my dad is still Mormon but it doesn't really affect our relationship at all because I don't consider 
my Mormon upbringing a cult so much. We just kind of don't talk about religion. Smart. Same <laughs> same with my family. Yeah. So when they when your family see you today and you're dressed very differently than how because I think when you're um, Mormon, you also have to dress a certain way. Not as extreme as the two by twos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. So is it like off putting to them when they see you dressed in however you want and you know. Not for, not for me because I've been pursuing music since I was like nine years old. Sure. So I've been wearing ridiculous outfits since I was literally yeah. nine years old. Yeah. But I think for you. For, I mean, my mom has probably never put on jeans or tasted alcohol or done any of it. And I have been half naked party girl, you know, doing a headstand in Playboy or something. <laughs> like it's just been so insane. So uh, yeah, I how I dress is very disturbing to my family. <laughs> And do you still go to, like, holidays and stuff with them? Yeah. Yeah. I just got back from a trip to, from Texas with them, with my boyfriend, and it's it's so it's so fun. We just keep religion. Completely off the table. Yeah, but yeah. then at prayers before meals, you know, they're like, just please help those who've lost their way, who can't The little shots. The, yeah. The little days. Like, mm, uh, amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who that's referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, and then when my grandpa was dying, he was just like having a hallucination and he's like don't take Megan to hell take me take me instead take me in her oh place my God. it's heartbreaking these things these this right. is real beliefs to people you love right. and yeah. if I could fake it and do it I would but I can't yeah. so it sucks and you shouldn't because you have to be true to yourself and, and yeah. I have to like my friend was just saying to me Megan do you want to protect your family who is they're themselves oppressed by these beliefs maybe you can free them a little bit mm -hmm. or do you not want to share the truth to like young women and people who need to hear it it's so right. fucked but yeah. i had to just make the the decision how and did you guys make the decision and get out of i think yours was a little easier because your mom was like well to get out of the the culty portion yeah. <laughs> where we believed in the prophet that was weirdly very easy because i already had kind of experienced a lot of problematic men in my mom's life um they are just drawn to her. All kinds of extreme personalities, good and bad, are just drawn to my mom. She just has this this presence and this innocence about her. So I was like, oh, cool. Yep, another one's bad. Moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, and she went to church, <laughs> a, back to regular church a little bit after that. But I think just slowly over time, I was like, if that guy can just be a fraud, then maybe the first guy was, was also a, a fraud. <laughs> we see a pattern here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, you said you have brothers. Did they, are they still in the cult religion? None of no. them. No. Mm, oh, yeah. Wow. Do you have siblings? Yeah. And are they all in? She just left. <sighs> yeah. How do you feel? Um, I'm I'm really happy for her, mm -hmm. but I'm also like, oh damn, no, they don't have anyone to like have in it. And do you have to like recruit people in the two by twos? It, it's not called the recruitment so much as it is uh, spreading the gospel. They believe that if you are not told the gospel by them, you go to hell. So that's fucked because how many people – are we allowed to say fuck? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. Fuck is yeah, my I'll favorite word. Because how many people aren't – How many people are not exposed yeah, to that gospel? Exactly. I've wow. never heard of the two by two. Most well, people you're, haven't. you're going to hell. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I was already going, so <laughs> that's not to be feared. But there is like a little thing in it where it's like – I think it's just to get members really afraid of – because it's like you know it now so you definitely are going to hell if you don't do it it's kind of a little bit mm -hmm. iffy for people who don't hear about it which mm. I was laughing the other day I was like wouldn't it be funny if I just never I tried to never hear the whole story <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't be in trouble um, but yeah <laughs> how interesting I just I, religion is so intriguing to me like I'm so intrigued by it but I just there's so many different like facets of so it. So many. So uh, many. When I went to Kingdom Hall with my friend and I was very much pregnant, I remember like her dad coming down the stairs for the first time and I broke a glass that I was holding because I was so afraid. Wow. Just because she was like warning me, telling me like how it's going to be when you go. The, the Certain people have to sit behind the glass because they are like shunned. Mm. And you have to like earn your way to come back in front of the glass. You have to sit behind glass. That is disgusting. Like if you sin, like if you're you you make you you're sinning. I didn't you have to know sit behind the glass, that. and then if you're not a sinner, then you can sit where you're allowed to sit with everybody else. Wow. Um, and so like people know that you were yeah doing things that you shouldn't have been uh. doing. My mom was excommunicated from Mormonism originally, mm -hmm. which is like part of that. The trauma of that process is, I think, what made her partially susceptible to the next guy mm -hmm. but it, it was sort of the same thing but not that blatant like you you weren't allowed to speak in church and you're not allowed to take the sacrament so people know 
if they're paying attention, but to straight up be sitting in a different area Mm -hmm. is, I mean, intentional humiliation, that that must be so traumatizing. And, like, the elders get to decide, like, when you get to come back to be with everybody else. Like, they are, like, the judgment... Don't get me started on random men making decisions for people's oh, elders. lives. Um, yeah. Elders, random old men. Yeah, random who have old the men. weirdest thoughts on things. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever see, what is the, I think it was on Netflix, um, and it was about Catholicism, the keep the keep oh i did i did i well i've seen so many docs at this point that they exit my brain so fast but i remember that one being great and it was like several episodes and it was about the catholic church in like maryland baltimore and how they like hid so many things and they killed a nun right right it was just like so i feel like that was like very culty oh totally because the they were so heavily just like covering for each other and doing Mm. all of these like wild things and you're just like how do we not how do we let this go yeah i just wonder that for mormonism and also for the two by twos i mean every religion i feel like has the potential to get to that place because it's such an in-group mentality right you're just trying to protect the the people in your group and you you share this ideology that oftentimes is an end times ideology the world's about to end you know that jesus is coming any day now and the second you know so it things the stakes just feel so different and people aren't necessarily always prioritizing the human basic human rights of of people who aren't in their particular part of the group or whatever yeah i mean my parents are very smart and they would say i would worry about pollution and cry and they'd be like megan jesus is gonna come back before anything like that happens yeah. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> cool. That was their answer yeah. to you? Mm-hmm. And Mormons, too. It's like the world's going to end any like any day now. It's like the, so like, coming, the people so. making most of the decisions in this country are very religious and honestly think it's about the world about to end. They don't give so a why shit would they, about the yeah. environment. Wait, they said that when <laughs> you were concerned about your yeah, like pollution yeah. and health? And like when yeah. I think of global warming, your parents would tell me that Jesus is going to come before. Yes. I think mo- I think most people, if they were honest, think that they. I think most people unconsciously cannot accept death, and they're just convinced that Jesus is going to come back, and they're not going to die. I think, that's, I so think that's really what the common denominator is here. I I think it's like it gives religion in general maybe are you know it gives people hope that there's something after death. Mm-hmm. Totally, I want that hope. I don't have it. Same, but, but I also want same. It. Like I would like it, but yeah. I even was telling Kristen yesterday. I was like, I've never even had like um any type of paranormal experience really, and so I'm like, I I hope for it one day just so I know that there's life after death. Yeah. But like so far, I'm 30 and nothing has happened. <laughs> so I'm just. <laughs> I had some as a kid that I clung to for a long time, and now I look back at them and I'm like, no, that's not what that was. Don't tell Lola any any spiritual experiences. (laughs) (laughs) No, I want to hear them. I want to debunk them. (laughs) Yeah, I I get it. Listen, I will take you on ghost hunting trips. (laughs) I want to go to the Cecil Hotel. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll feel something over there. Yeah. Because I. The murder hotel. No matter what, there's some kind of I don't know energy. I don't there. know. Yeah. So, do you guys carry anything from the religion slash cults now? Like, do you guys follow? Is there any little shred or like thread of anything that you still hold on to and believe today? I love the values that my family has. They so there's no TV, so they just play games. They're always together, <laughs> okay, singing. Playing, I love that. Playing music, laughing. Like the house is so alive. When we were in Texas, it's just so fun it, yeah. it's it's great I love that I value friendships more than anything like else. connecting outside connecting. of your phone yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would, uh, I, or your I TV stand to do more of that. I like that yeah <laughs> yeah well I actually to this day I am 34 and I've never intentionally had a sip of alcohol okay um which is not for any reason reason other than it's just like sort of left over mm-hmm. from that I will drink at some point and now at this point I'm just like waiting for a a reason celebration yeah yeah (laughs) yeah because i'm like this is stupid why am i doing this but that's left over i will also say i do think that the lds community is like uh very kind typically and they care a lot about doing service totally um and 
you know, growing up, everyone I knew was like really good at piano. <laughs> like uh, they're all about learning. Unlike Jehovah's Witnesses, who I think are a lot more like don't do anything for yourself, don't excel in life because you just want to focus on Jesus. Mormons are very much like, how can I be the best version of me? And I do really appreciate that. And I think it makes a lot of people very happy. It makes my dad very happy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, my parents are the happiest people I know. They are constantly happy. <laughs> How interesting that yeah. you guys are, like, out, but they're happy where they're at. They're yeah. so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then it makes you not want to even... Burst like, their bubble. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, what would my... My parents are in their 60s. Oh, my God. I'm like, no. My, make Give my parent... Anyone yeah. I love, like, a crisis... An existential crisis no at way. age 64 yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, no, no thank you. The only thing is the two-by-twos don't really promise you heaven at all in fact they say barely anyone is going kind of mm. so I, I would like my parents to know that they're going to heaven that's yeah. the only reason I would want to yeah. get them out but anyway I just wish my dad yeah. knew that I was also going to heaven yeah Which that'd he... be nice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's always nice <laughs> okay so you said that you focus on music a lot can you tell me a little bit about that yeah so I most of my life was um pop music was my focus mm -hmm. in my career and my direction. Wrote a song for Britney Spears. I wrote a song Just for Britney Spears. Turn it out. <laughs> what song was it? It was called Ooh La La. It was going to be Ooh Lo La, but then it she was her it. song. She <laughs> 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 Lola. She's having a baby. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. She's, I'm, I'm, I was a huge Britney fan. This look was um, like a mix between Britney and Christina. Oh, I see it. I yeah. see it. I love it. Yeah. Just call me <laughs> Christina Spears. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Baby, one more time. So, okay, you wrote a song for Britney. What else have you worked on? Um, I mean, I've been putting out my own music for years now. I actually have a new song coming out. But I have to say, over time, um, the music industry, I wasn't finding it as fulfilling as I could for a variety of reasons. And I discovered that my real passion is filmmaking. Okay. So I'm a writer-director now. Um I've also acted for a long time. But so I, I've gotten to this place where, yes, I've put out music videos. I've had some songs that have done fairly well on the internet. Um, and I've written songs for, like, K-pop groups and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I really just feel so passionate about directing that I'm like, okay, I will keep doing music. But this is going to be, like, the thing I do because I'm passionate about it as opposed to the thing I do because I'm, like, trying to be a pop star. Like, right, that just right. doesn't serve me anymore. Sure, you know? sure. No, I get that. Also, I'm in my 30s, and I'm like, Dude, who has time for this hustle anymore? You never know. I feel like TikTok has made it, like, you could become an overnight sensation. That's true. You know That's what I mean? True. I, but yeah. I've seen people who, who've had that experience, but then they're, like, sort of behind holden to the like very particular formula that yeah. got them popular and mm -hmm. I'm, I also don't want that I want to be able to evolve and grow and mm -hmm. change so listen I wouldn't turn it down right <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just also like I fucking love films I love yeah. horror films in particular but Ooh, like, like art, what what's your favorite uh I love the funny games I don't know that one it's more like art house like fucked like up thriller. American horror story more European. <laughs> more acid. More, more acid. European. More disturbing. More European. More um, like. Yeah. When I think of disturbing, I think of like Saw. Yeah, it's like that, but like if an. Uh, if someone with more European <laughs> sensibilities made it's like very subdued and subtle and there's like no music through the whole thing and okay. so it feels super real I just like stuff that makes me feel genuine horror because I'm so desensitized at this point that I'm like I need it to be such a specific experience okay but anyway that's what I love yeah oh I mean to each their own I, <laughs> I find that so interesting like how um Quentin Tarantino and mm -hmm. people like that like create these movies like and there was nothing wrong with them ever what, as in they weren't, didn't have trauma? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like well, they I just have like that. normal lives and yeah. then you have, you write these movies and direct these movies that are absolutely horrifying and like you just go about your day any other time. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. I totally know what you mean. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Of course. Like, yeah. ha, like how, you just turn on a switch and it's like horror? I mean, I think so. I, I read S Stephen King's memoir and he said kind of that. Yeah. It's a switch. Oh, yeah. Stephen King's a per perfect example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how interesting is that? I, I guess, think it's... Oh, no, go, please. I think there's, like... So, I think it's something about, like... Well, there are different, actually, I think, reasons that lead people to it. It's because there's actually... There have actually been studies on how people who do have trauma in their past find horror to, horror to be um, cathartic because they're like, oh, look at all this trauma that isn't happening to me. Um, and I'm, like, safe from what's happening on the screen because it's just on the screen. So there's this interesting... Um, I don't have that. When I watch something scary, like, especially ID channel, which I'm obsessed with, <laughs> um, while I'm watching it, 
I think that someone is going to come murder me because I'm watching it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they see me watching something murder esque and they're going to come kill me. <laughs> yeah. So I don't like, have whatever is you're she describing. Watching true crime? Yes. Perfect I'm going to kill her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly how it feels I'm like okay well um so yeah what what do you do outside I'm a of- writer okay yeah so Love I that. sold the movie it didn't get made but I'm okay. making another one that is going to get made I'm going to make sure of it okay and then a uh, podcaster yeah I have yeah. another podcast that's more about spiritual stuff it's called superficial magic okay and uh yeah I'm, I'm mostly a writer that's I also is. write a lot do you yeah what um, kind of stuff um Mainly, well, I have my memoir. And Amazing. I, yeah. And then I also, like, I've been through so much, like, trauma. I'm writing a mm. novel right now about domestic violence mm. um, and just narcissism that is, it's based on a true story, but um, not so much magical um, fiction things, more like real, real. life. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I would love my life to be, like, a Lifetime movie just because I feel like people don't know who I am before the cameras came into my mm-hmm. life. Right. And they don't know, like, the things that I've seen, you know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe I should write it into, like, a script, like a movie you script. You should. Dude, hell yeah. Or that publish cool. that shouldn't have someone, someone else do it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'll direct. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I love that. Um, okay. So I have a couple questions on here for you guys. Um, okay, so are there way more cults than we know about out there? Do cults have a lot in common with each other? And I think the answer is yes. I had no, I, I don't know why I thought you were a Jehovah Witness. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, so I didn't realize that Jehovah Witness and Mormon was so similar. I mean, there there are a lot of differences, but people get them confused a lot. I feel like they're sort of the two Christian-y, but, like, weird religions that are relatively big. and Okay. That they both, like, go around to people's houses, knocking on doors, trying to convert them. That's so great. Has, is two by twos. Yes, the two by twos do that yeah. as well. I have. I don't. I'm gonna have to look it up in Delaware, but I don't think we have them in Delaware. Oh, you totally do. You'd be yeah. You'd you, be surprised. There's prob- so they're called meetings. The church things. You probably have ten meetings every Sunday and Wednesday in your city. We would go to Germany to a small ass town and go to someone's house, get in the meeting in Germany. Yeah, as everywhere, as big. But it's, 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 like, hidden because there are no churches displaying it. It's just, like, happening in people's homes, like a secret society. It's a secret. And they're trying to keep it a secret. And that's why I feel guilty keep talking about it. But it's doing some bad stuff, so I have to. Eek. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, um, like Boop. I was saying earlier, the, the Amish or whatever was um, – I didn't realize that was like kind of culty. I thought they're they're because um, they're all my neighbors. Like they build my cabinets, they build you know stuff on my house. Like had no idea. Well, they don't educate them till they educate them to eighth grade. There's no way that they can escape really. But I guess I what I thought was them trying to just like live before technology. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a control tactic. It has nothing to do with. There's no information. Them wanting to live in a more simple world. It's them wanting to control people. And, right. And they're, you know. Yes. Well, I'm sure there are people who authentically want to live or at least believe that they want sure. to live that lifestyle. Right. right. But when you're not exposed to outside information and like. How do you really make a decision yeah. for yourself? There's, There's no free will, will if you don't know. People try to leave. They have an eighth grade education. They don't. They, they, they can't. They, they end up going back a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, they don't have any information that would help them live in this reality do either one of your experiences like do they have like an out for you where you're able to go experience what it's like to be out of the religion and then decide for yourself or you just no. kind of have to make that break on does your own? anyone actually do that because we had an Am- a former amish woman on our podcast and she was like the idea of rumspringer or whatever is not real where they can go away for a year and party and come back i don't know of any religions that actually do that do you like no. in, in Mormonism, if you like go have pre- having premarital sex or whatever, like you'll get excommunicated. You have to like really work hard to be allowed back into the church. It's not like go have fun. We'll see you after. You know. Interesting. Was um the Jody Arias Travis the guy that she was that she killed? He was Mormon, right? Oh wait, which one is that? Remember the girl with the glasses who was crazy I'll show you the girl with the glasses I'm gonna need more information <laughs> she is one of my favorite cases to watch her in the interrogation room you will love it mm. there are it's uh, did you hear about like the Chad and Lori Daybell case recently no. where they killed um, her two children no wow, okay let's see look him up Travis Alexander oh. I'm pretty sure he was Mormon Kristen can you hear me oops was he Mormon 
And I believe that she, like, converted for him. Whoa. 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 Wow. And then she ended up killing him. It does look like that, yeah. There are a surprising... I mean, I think is, the thing is, Mormonism is just, like, kind of around. So, the inevitably, it's going to intersect with all kinds of cases. But there are also a number of people who started out Mormon and then kind of got extreme and, and ended up murdering someone. That's <laughs> not inherent to the religion. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course <laughs> but not. But it happens. But it happens. Yeah. Uh, to any religion, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's a show, Escaping Polygamy. What are your thoughts on that? Um... You don't want to talk about it? <laughs> no, I. So my mom actually lives in a, polyg- a traditionally polygamous town, where the FLDS fundamentalist Mormons who have all the wives, um, where they historically have lived. So that show kind of um, delves into that community and escaping. But I think some of those shows can be a little bit sensationalizing because the prophet's actually been in prison for like fifteen years and no one listens to him anymore because they don't even talk to him anymore. So, uh, you know, I don't, I, I have different, there are a variety of documentaries on them. Some of them are sensationalizing that one, you know, (laughs) how do I say it? (laughs) It's halfway sensationalizing, halfway not. It can be, yeah. I mean, some people I know have been on the show and I think even my mom was on the show and um, I'm glad they're at least spotlighting the like survivor stories but there also are it's just such a nuanced community where people want especially now because the new show is out um uh john krakauer um oh my gosh it's got andrew garfield in it what is it called do you guys know what i'm talking about i don't know no i have no idea under the banner of heaven um is about a fundamentalist mormon community and i was just talking to my mom about this there are so many different offshoots that have so many different things going on, but people lump them all together and okay. say, this they're all bad, they're all child molesters, not- they're all murderers, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, there's so much nuance in that, and it's just kind of hard to get into a reality show, basically. Right. Okay. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. I would echo that precisely. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's good, though. I actually haven't seen it. It's good. And um, some people think of, like, the Instagram life coaches as mm. kind of cultish. Hell yes. So let's talk about <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about it. Well, we I can name two right offhand. We, our favorite uh, online cult leader, Teal Swan, is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Megan made a pukey face, if anyone's mm-hmm. Yes, um, in case you didn't hear it also. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, a man named Benton Helmasaro. Both of these people have done very well for themselves on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, uh, and people just think they're another self-help person. And then meanwhile, they're basically encouraging suicide or like uh, Benton Ho Masaro. He just had a, um, a few different former followers come forward and say he was extremely abusive and extremely controlling and there was sexual abuse going on, I think. So, so many of these people. Encouraging suicide? Well, she says if you... If you kill yourself in this life, you're going to pop into a new one immediately with the same problem. So she's trying to tell you not to do it. It's like, don't do it because you're just going to have the same thing. But it's not a big deal if you do because you're just going to live again. And maybe that life will give you more opportunities to fix this current problem. So maybe you're right. Maybe you should bounce to the next one. She has said things like, uh, maybe you weren't meant for this life. Like, shit like that. Where it's like, she thinks that she's being a good therapist or something i think she genuinely thinks that although she claims to have psychic power and i actually went to one of her workshops and it was very people believe this oh yeah oh yeah and they're on instagram i've never heard of either of these people oh my i have friends who they like follow a lot of self-help people teal swan just comes up as one of the regular people and like i think she really believes her shit but that doesn't mean it's not harmful she said that she was sewed into a dead body when she was a, a child she was sewed into a dead body. She believes she experienced satanic ritual abuse, which included, you know, that scene from Star Wars where Luke gets into the, like, cut slits the <laughs> creature open and she slides into the body. She does not look like she knows no. what that means. Okay. I don't either, but your face is really funny. Someone right will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. She claims that this satanic cult had her climb into a human body that was cut open, which, like, just for sure didn't happen. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Where, where are her her parents aren't speaking out against her at this point i don't know i just feel like if one of my children were doing this i would i have four boys i would not stand for it and i would speak out against them you know what i mean well if one of your children is that charismatic i'm sure it would be such a problem to like not just charismatic psych psychotic and charismatic their fans could come for you yeah they can come for you also who knows what her actual dynamics were growing up but 
Yeah, she makes a lot of very bizarre claims. And we made fun of one of her videos on TikTok, which we should do more of. Because mm-hmm. she does these videos where she'll say stuff like, knowledge is bad. <laughs> she's basically saying, like, so, yeah, and you're just like, whoa. But she's telling her you. Her name is Teal? Teal yeah. Swan, yeah. Let me look her up right now. She's, she's very, very pretty. <laughs> Jinx. Wow. She is. She's very beautiful, um, very odd, very monotone. Like strange. the color teal? Yes. Yeah. And then Benton Homosaro does these videos where he just like stares into camera to try to bond with you. And it is so creepy. Mm hmm. He's, he's a snake. Like this. She's a best selling author, it says. Yeah, I have no doubt. I'm staring into camera right now. I'm going to be too. Benton Homosaro. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Earth Day. This means it's time to love the Earth. But what does that really mean? It means to see, hear, feel, and understand the Earth. And understand. So yes. as to take its best interests as a part of our own. Let's she's face it. sitting on the bathroom floor. <laughs> she also says she can speak every today. language, but she's not going to show you because she doesn't have to. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> that might be wrong. She might just say she speaks five, but... Uh, How interesting is this? I just I I'm gonna like go and down a rabbit hole later of her so that I can fully understand. I don't just, get don't get trapped. Yeah, she has almost six hundred thousand followers. I know, I know. It's like oh, TikTok has blo- has made her bigger. Yeah, yeah. I I gotta say, it's I'm like sort of inherently distrustful of self help people on social media, right? Because as soon as I see someone being like, listen, this is the answer. This is how it works. You have to listen to me. I'm going to fix your problems. I'm like... Immediately you know. Don't, what do you know? What do you know about my life? And I've had, like... I've, like, gone on days with people who are sort of in that world. And he's, like... He acts so confident. And, like, he knows exactly what the answer is. And then I'm like, you're a mess. Literally. Like, your life is a mess. You're giving people life advice? I, I used to be a therapist. And then I would go home, take Ambien, blackout... And act like an idiot. And I was just like, why am I waking up in the morning and telling people how to live? I, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> this has to end. You, you didn't think that it was a good fit for you? No. Why? Tell me more about because this. Because I'm insane. Like, I'm too, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you ha- and a lot of the people selling this shit are batshit crazy. And they are narcissistic enough to not see it in themselves uh, or be like, you know, ca- charismatic, I guess, when we talk about cults isn't necessarily a good thing. It means uh, uh, kind of. I mean, it, yeah, no, if someone is charismatic, we've talked about this before. Yeah. I, I, it, I don't, I don't that like turns people that, are, yes, yeah. Yeah. also saying, yeah. but not because of a cult, but because my ex narcissist. Because that's how abusive the charis- people are. Yes. 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 It's the char- the charisma for mm-hmm. me. Like, yeah. I literally just, if you are charming in any way, that is, is, <laughs> I it just It must can't. be so hard for you to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have, um, I have so many questions about this therapy. So, um. So you you just decided like this is not for me. I shouldn't be telling people how to live. Yeah. But I, don't you feel like because you have experienced so much in your life that you you are good to give people advice? Absolutely. And I was talking to like no one ever missed a session with me. I will say that much. Everyone would always be like my clients aren't coming in, and I'd be like, oh fuck, mine's here again. I yeah. don't want them to be, but there they are. Um, because I did go through a lot, and I I am not a judgmental person, and there is a lot good there, but. I don't think life coaching or therapy is necessarily why I would be doing the best. My impression of you is that you're such a good listener and you're so good at giving advice, but that you would maybe take on other people's pain. Oh, I would just ball the whole way home. Yeah. Like that's – Like there's like no compart- car- compartmentalizing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm also I, – I also do comedy and that's where I feel like – I was just like I, they would be more beneficial going home and watching a funny TV show that I'm writing on than me just – crying all night because they're sad right no because I, I definitely think um for therapists and therapy like there are certain one certain therapists that haven't experienced anything and yeah. then you're like you really have no business giving anyone advice right. and then you have people who go through so much and it's like they should give advice yeah. because they've seen so many walks of life so many different perspectives so many experiences yeah i hate giving advice i never give good advice i'm not the friend that people go to well, like, I, mean, I, I am my advice is always somewhat illegal but it's really good <laughs> i love that just a little illegal but it's fine it's like better call Saul of therapists so how did you get involved in comedy um so when i first moved out here this is kind of interesting actually well i'm my boyfriend was an actor mm-hmm. who was 
that was another thing, like just on the stupidest CW show, and like it just <laughs> he was a mess, an embarrassing mess, and so it was a nightmare. Um, I can't believe I was trying to tell people how to live a normal life. But uh, <laughs> what was the question again? How did you get into comedy? Right. Okay. So <laughs> that boyfriend had a friend, and his name is Owen Benjamin, and he's one of the best stand-ups I've ever seen in my entire life. Ironically, started a cult and left <gasps> LA. Wait, he started a cult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, I didn't know that. I know that. Where are you all both from? I'm from Kansas. I'm from Michigan and Utah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this guy that you loved, that was a loved. great comedian. Had like four Comedy Central specials, got me into stand-up, like helped me write my first set, would take me on tour, loved him, my roommate, like this. And then he, he, we always were with gay people we were always with jewish people suddenly he didn't think either of those things were okay oh okay. no yeah it oh. was it's really 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 sad yeah. um and and it's also i mean it's also hard to be sad for somebody who's said such hateful shit but i love wow. i loved him so much so he got me into stand-up um and now <laughs> <Tight>. i <laughs> lola came and saw me do it and now i have a lot of cult uh jokes so and then how did you guys connect through a mutual friend uh, who is now writing a project about cults? We just—it's a cult world. So, are you, you guys going to be part of the project? Well, if it gets made, <laughs> isn't that that sucks? Like, you know, when you work so hard at something and then it just like nothing happens with I it. Know. Like, welcome to Hollywood, baby. Yeah. <sighs> that's the worst. I feel like that's anywhere though. Like I know. anywhere. Yeah, it's the worst. You guys, you just have to trust your higher power. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> But anyway, where what what are you guys working on now? You're working on a project that you said you're you're gonna get it. Oh, it's yeah, get picked up. Yeah, for okay. sure. Should I should I talk? Should, maybe you can talk about I, it if I? you want. If well, you well, haven't announced you. it, then no. I, I haven't announced it. Okay, then no. We're not gonna announce it here. We're, we'll announce it on your own stuff. Okay, I'm, y- yeah. Whatever you want. I just want to say it right. So uh, essentially, I'm working on a cartoon for adult women. Oh, okay. Malibu RX about Love like that. Malibu Barbie. She's a therapist and she's insane. I love that. Love I it. love that. You can do so much with that. Yeah. I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I just uh, got my next short film funded. Um, so I'm going into pre-production right now. And then I have no music coming out. And listen, if anyone wants to give me money for my uh, cult horror feature, I'm available. <laughs> you have she like will. A, uh, I wrote a script. Kickstarter or whatever. What do people use to get funding? Um, I So, yeah, I used a, a, a crowdfunding website to do my – uh, to get my short film funded. Cool. So I'll link it or whatever you need. Do you, do you still have it? it? It ends today. Oh, well, this one won't be out in time, but, <laughs> but then, I, was gonna, I was willing to post it. Thank you. But new music thank is you. coming out and I'm just, you know, I'm on the internet. You can find it all. Yes. Is there anything else you guys want to plug before we go? <sighs> our just, podcast. Yeah, our podcast. Trust me. Come listen. It's what really days fun. you guys release? Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Perfect. It's trust. Trust me. Extreme belief and the abuse of power. Trust me. Cult, extreme belief, and the abuse of power. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> From those who know. Oh! <laughs> thank you guys so much thank for you. being here. Thanks for having us. Of course. <laughs>